There are so many cool animes out in the world ranging from Dragon Ball Z, Bleach, Jujutsu Kaisen, Spy Family, and so much more. In this video, I'll be attempting to create four knit and crochet pieces inspired from four different animes. The first anime I'll be attempting is Attack on Titan. The character Mikasa wears a dark red scarf around her neck that was given to her by the main character Eren when they were both children. The scarf looks to be a basic fleece fabric scarf and that could have been a basic knit scarf but I wanted to add my own creative spin on it and give myself a little challenge so instead of replicating it I wanted to create a scarf inspired by it instead. For Mikasa's scarf I was thinking of using one of these three designs that I came up with. Um, I really like at first I was thinking of just doing like a basic cable knit scarf but then I was like I feel like this wouldn't represent her as much like I know that the scarf was like just a plain red scarf in the anime but I really wanted to do something that's like okay this means something to Mikasa if that even makes sense um but I really liked how these two came out and I really don't know if this means that I liked the middle one or the right one, but I might choose between one of these two. Um, I really like the heart. Since it's a scarf that Erin gave her, I thought it would be cool to have like the heart to represent the love that they share for one another or whatever. Um, and then there'd be more cable knits on the side, as well as a little border on the the bottom and the top of the scarf. So that's the design I came up with for Attack on Titan. And the first step into bringing this design to life is learning how to do the heart cables because I have no idea how to do them. So after looking at a graph that shows how to do the heart cable, I realized that I didn't have to practice since it was still normal cable stitches. So instead I went right into working on my scarf. For the scarf, I created this little pattern here with 16 stitches in the middle for the heart. And then on both sides, the pattern repeats with what's shown on the screen. I wanted to add more cables on the side but hopefully just one will look nice. I first started with a cast on of 48 and then did five rows of knit two purl two. While I worked on it I listened to the Hunger Games audiobook. This is my first time listening to an audiobook and at first I was always saying that I'd never listen to them but I realized that it's incredibly convenient when I want to read and work on my projects at the same time. After the five rows of knit two purl two I went ahead and started my pattern. It was a tad bit similar to the Rory Gilmore pattern. For the heart pattern I used Studio Knits pattern that I'll link in the description. It was incredibly helpful to figuring out how to do the heart and after the heart section I did the same exact pattern that I did before the heart but in reverse. Then for the wrong side of the project I just worked the stitches as it told me. So if I saw a bump that showed me that I needed to purl and if I saw a V stitch then it showed me that I needed to knit. It was a fairly simple pattern but I could easily make mistakes so it required my full attention while knitting. So it's been a couple of hours and this is what I have done so far. Um, this is about 39 rows when you're not including the five rows of ribbing that I did and it's really pretty so far I'm really liking it it's the perfect size for a scarf in my opinion and I really like it I'm really happy I did mess up right here like you can see these kind of like don't go in like this does and then I realized what I was doing wrong and then fixed it um, this whole part I'm just following that pattern that I talked about earlier because um, I wouldn't have figured this out on my own. But after the heart, I'm, all of this is just what I came up with. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and continue working and see how much I can get done today. Since I finished reading The Hunger Games, I decided to watch it while I worked on the scarf. The book is better, of course, but I still truly enjoyed the film and can't wait to read the second book. Today's the next day, and this is what I have done so far. Uh, yesterday, I was able to do nine hearts in the middle. I wanted to do 10 hearts at least before stopping, but on the eighth heart, I was just messing up so bad. Like no matter how many times I went super slow and made sure to look at the heart pattern, I still kept messing up. So I had to continuously unravel, redo it, unravel, and then just that for at least an hour and like 30 minutes or something. I'm not like exaggerating. and. Unfortunately, knitting isn't as forgiving as crochet. So like if you make a mistake in crochet, all you have to do is just pull it a little bit and then redo it. But with this, you have to take the needle out, pull it out, make sure the needle goes into every stitch without it falling all the way down and unraveling. And it's just tedious. So I try not to make mistakes in knitting, but mistakes are inevitable no matter what you're doing. Um, 
but I really truly love how this is coming out like usually it'll take me until the project's done and then a week after to be like okay I like this but as I'm going it's just so pretty and I just can't wait to be able to use this and wrap it around my neck and wear it outside but yeah that is the little update I'm gonna see it might be a stretch and it's okay if I don't accomplish this but I want to see if I can do at least 20 hearts today before the end of the day and just see how long it should be before I try and do the hearts backwards so that if it's on this side and on this side, they'll both look exactly the same, if that makes sense. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get back to work on that. I ended up only being able to finish 11 and then decided that after the 21st heart, I would start the second half of the scarf. To flip the scarf, I followed the same pattern but upside down, which I'll also link in the description box below. From here, I continued working on the hearts while listening to the Catching Fire audiobook, hoping to finish by the end of the day. I ended up finishing the next morning with a total of 435 rows before working 5 rows of Knit 2 Pearl 2 and then casting off. The first piece that I completed was my Mikasa inspired scarf. I love this scarf, you guys. I am so happy with how it came out. While I was making it, I was just stopping and looking at it like, wow, this is coming out to be so cute. I love how I did the hearts in the middle and how I said that it represents Mikasa and Eren. I think that was a good idea. And then how both sides are identical to each other and it just makes the entire scarf flow into one, which I really like. Um, I was originally going to make it a lot longer. It stops on my like mid thigh um but when i was casting off i wasn't sure if it was long enough so i was a bit scared but i think this is like the perfect length for a scarf and i could twist it around and it's still perfectly long but yeah i'm really happy with this scarf it feels incredibly elegant and i feel like it would be even better if i blocked it but i'm not sure if i will or not Anyway, I love this scarf. I think it's probably my favorite piece out of all of the pieces in this video. And yeah, I think this one is a success. The next anime is Toilet Bound Hanako-kun. I thought it would be cute to have something revolve around Moke, which is a bunny spirit in the show. I decided to try to make a plushie, which will also help me gain some skill in making amigurumi at the same time. For the bunny, I need a head, a body, and two ears. This is my first attempt at creating my own amigurumi pattern, so I thought Moke would be a nice and simple way to start. For Moke, I first started with creating a magic circle and then single crocheted six into the circle. I then marked the last stitch just to know when the next row would end. For row 2, I added 2 single crochets into each stitch, which adds an increase into each. Then I take out the stitch marker and finish the last increase in the last stitch, which makes my stitch count 12. For row 3, I added one single crochet into the first stitch, add my stitch marker back, and then do a pattern of one increase and then one regular single crochet until the end of the row. I basically just increase in every second stitch. For row 4, I add one single crochet into the first stitch, add my stitch marker back, and then work an increase into every third stitch. So I work another single crochet after the first stitch, and then on the third stitch, I add my increase. I repeat this all around until the end of the row. Here's a pattern that I follow for the rest of the increases. After the increases are done, I had 48 stitches all around. From row 9 to row 24, I just single crocheted around with no increases in order to make the body longer. Once I got to row 24, I began my decrease row which was the exact same as the increases but instead of increasing I decreased so for row 24 I worked seven stitches of single crochet and then on the eighth stitch I went into the front loop and pulled up the loop I then went into the front loop of the next stitch and did the same I then completed a single crochet normally which makes an invisible stitch here is the decrease pattern that I followed throughout the rest of the plushie on row 28 I added my eyes which I thought was pretty big so I exchanged them for a smaller size that was a lot better after adding the backings to them I used my scrap yarn to fill the plushie as much as I could so the body could form correctly as I stuffed it I got really excited 
excited because it was coming out exactly as I pictured it and I didn't even have to look at a pattern or anything to make it. After finishing stuffing it, I finished up the decrease patterns before weaving in the end into each stitch and then into the body of the plushie before cutting off. For the ears, I did another magic circle and worked six stitches into the circle. After closing the circle, I worked one row of increases into each stitch. Here's the pattern I followed for the ear increases. After I finished those three rows, I worked single crochet normally into each stitch for 14 rows and then on row 15 I cut off making sure to keep a long tail. To attach the ears, I first stuffed them with the scrap yarn and then placed them on the head where I wanted it to be and then took the long tail and just began to sew in and out around the head until the ear was secure. I did the same thing with the other ear and then moke was complete. The next piece I made is my moke plushie. I'm really happy with it. The ears are a bit more to the side than I prefer, especially this one. I think I had to redo this one, I think three or four times, cause it was just awkward. And then it's still kind of awkward right now, but I still love it and it's super, super cute. Um, this amigurumi was pretty easy to make. All I did was just make a body and two ears. And I was surprised that it went well. So maybe that means that I'm getting better at understanding how amigurumi works. So maybe I'll keep trying in the future and eventually have like my own original amigurumi projects or something to share with you guys. I think that'll be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this yarn is so incredibly soft. Um, I would recommend it. Um, the when, it, when you cut it, it does leave those little fuzzies, but people have told me that if you like slightly burn it, just like really quickly, not for it to like catch on fire or anything like please be careful when you do that it'll like close the end so the fuzzies won't fall off anymore but yeah uh look online how to do that i haven't done it yet and i'm not trying to make you guys burn your houses down so just look into that if you're gonna do that i love moke and i love how it turned out okay so this is where the problems of this anime challenge began to arise. At first, I had decided that I was going to make something from Madoka Magica. At first, it was going to be a sweater, but I didn't know how exactly I wanted the sweater to come out. I didn't want a basic sweater with a graph in the front since I've done those before. So I opted to create a blanket from this graph and got excited because of how cool the blanket would look if I succeeded. The first thing I did was take the time to label the squares so I can easily drift through the grid pattern without having to count. This unfortunately took almost 5 hours to do. I didn't realize how many squares there were until I started counting. Once I finished labeling the squares and contemplating my existence, I cast it on 150 with white and then went ahead and began the blanket. After a couple of hours, I decided to give up and make something smaller like a desk mat. When I remembered I had chunky yarn for a tanjiro blanket I wanted to make a while back, so I decided that instead, I'll make that blanket. I first labeled all of the squares on the grid, which was a thousand times faster than Madoka's grid, and went ahead and started by casting on 100 with black. Since I was using bulky yarn, the blanket was going to turn out 10 times bigger, and it'll be softer, which I was excited for. I was also thinking of doing a black border around the blanket with crochet when it's done to avoid the stockinette stitch curling. I went ahead and got started with the graph, making sure to switch colors when the grid told me to, and while working on the blanket, I decided to listen to some random music albums, but then I wasn't feeling feeling the project anymore. It wasn't looking that great and it was going to take a long time to do for a project that I only half liked. So I decided to take it apart and go back to the drawing board. Okay, so here's the new plan. What I'm thinking of doing is some pants that are inspired by Gi's Haori. So I'm thinking of having one side all red and then all side the checkered print. And I'm thinking of doing both sides separately because I just attempted to do it in the round and it was not working the way that I thought it would. Also, I saw these pants and I think these are so cute and I love the bubble stitch. So I'm thinking of trying to do these pants, but in a Giyu form. And that's literally the last idea I have. I was also thinking of doing a dress from Perfect Blue, but that's only if the pants don't work out. If the pants don't work out, then you'll be seeing this dress. Um, but I really want to do these pants, I think they'll be really cool and I'll learn how to do the bubble stitch. So I literally have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm gonna try. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, the bubble stitch didn't work. It did work, but it wasn't as baggy as I'd like it to be, so I decided to just do a regular old stockinette stitch. I first worked on the red side of the pants to make sure it would actually work. I just finished the first pant leg, which was a total of 104 rows, plus five rows of ribbing on the bottom. At first, I was gonna start over or call it quits because I thought it wasn't baggy enough, and it is more form-fitting, but, but obviously I can block it if I need to, and it's not that bad. Like the form-fitting is still cute and everything, but we'll have to see what the other section looks like. I'm gonna be using these colors. Um, I know that there's an orange in there, and I was thinking of adding the orange, but I just don't know how it's gonna look, so I'm gonna play around with it and then go ahead and get started on the second pant leg. To figure out how much I needed to cast on for my pants, I first created a swatch with Knit One Pro One for 10 stitches and then measured how wide it was. I then used this formula and plugged in my hip measurement, the amount of stitches in the swatch, and how wide the swatch was. I then followed the steps listed here and got my cast on amount, even though I did alter it slightly just cause I felt like it. For the second leg, I first cast it on 42 and did eight rows of one by one rib, which is just Knit One Pro One. Then I went ahead and began to add my colors to the legs. Here's a little diagram I followed for the colors. There's a total of six colors per row, taking up six stitches for a total of 10 rows before switching to the next set of colors. To attach a color, all I do is add my working needle into the stitch as if to knit, loop the yarn around the working needle, and then knit normally. I do this for every color that needs to be added. To switch through the colors after they've been added, on the purl side, all I do is make sure the new color is coming up from under the old color, and then purl normally. For the knits, side, I take the new color, make sure it's under the old color, and then knit normally. This sort of traps the yarn in place so that there isn't any gaps in between the color changes. I continued this process while watching Berlizzi play Heavy Rain, and then an occasional Spy Family episode, which is such a funny anime, you guys. The next day, I put the pant legs on my leg to see how long I'd want the inseam to be. I decided it to be 18 stitches long, not including the waistband, and added stitch markers to the 18th stitch on both sides of both legs. I then aligned the legs together with stitch markers and began seaming them together for the inseam. To seam them, all I did was work a long tail of yarn through these little bar stitches on one leg and then the same on the opposite leg and did this until I reached the last stitch marker. After I seamed up the rest of the leg doing the same method with the bar stitches in the center area, I just continued to do what I was doing but just made sure that it was aligned. After the pants were all seamed together, I crocheted a drawstring with 150 chains and seamed it through the waistband. The third piece I made for this little challenge is my Giyu pants from Demon Slayer. These are only gonna be worn inside the house just because these were my first ever knitted pants ever. And um, I did mess up on some things, like the waist is really big um, because I was trying to make sure it fit over my thighs, but I didn't really account for the fact that it'll stretch. So I think I could have made a smaller waist, but at the same time, they are pretty fitted on my thighs so maybe it would have been too small if i did that um i still have to figure out how knitted pants actually work um i was thinking of actually putting an elastic in the waistband at first but i just didn't i thought it fits perfectly fine if i just do the drawstring so i just did that um the colors are really cute i'm probably i'm not sure if it's entirely accurate i tried to do the colors as best as i could and I feel like this could have been a lot better, um, but I was at the point where I was like, three of the projects so far was failing. It was taking up so much time just to figure out how to fix these designs. And out of all of them messing up, I think coming out with this was pretty good in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I was getting so sad. I got kept messing up. The blankets were too big and then they weren't even coming out the way that I wanted them to. So I was like, okay, let's figure something out for this. And I ended up deciding on making Giyu pants. And yeah, like I said, I'm pretty happy with how they came out. Even though this was my first time making pants, it's given me some idea of how they're constructed. And I feel like the next couple of times that I do make knitted pants, they'll come out just as I want them to be. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Ghibli isn't necessarily an anime, nor is it one singular show or movie. And I know, but I didn't know where else to place this, so our fourth anime is a Ghibli-inspired piece. And unfortunately, again, problems arose in this challenge of ours. I originally wanted to do something that would combine elements of different Ghibli movies that I enjoyed into one singular piece. 
Here is the design that I'm thinking about. Um, I On both sides of the bag, there's going to be two graphs from a different Ghibli movie. Um, I want to have like at least one granny square on each side and then there's going to be one patch that looks really cool. So for this one, I thought it would be cool to do like a bobble stitch. And this one is going to be like the basket weave stitch, which I've never done before. So I thought that would be pretty cool to do. For the Gigi square, I chained 37 and automatically began the graph. For the first row of the graph from right to left, I worked the background color for 10 stitches. And then on the 10th stitch, I finished half a single crochet stitch before grabbing my black yarn and adding it onto the stitch. This makes the color change more seamless and neat. I then worked with the black for 21 stitches. I had to switch back to the background color, but because it's a bit far from the last stitch I did with it, I cut a really long tail for the background color and made a mini skein of yarn so that I could use it for the right side that it's on. I then attached the background color to the 21st stitch after doing a half single crochet with the black and then finished the row with 5 stitches of the background color. For the second row, which is on the wrong side, I worked from left to right on the graph. I worked 4 stitches with the background color and on the 5th stitch, I did half a single crochet before grabbing the black and finishing the stitch. On the wrong side of the graph, I dropped the yarn in the front, but on the right side of the graph, I drop it in the back. I continued this pattern working each stitch of the graph while listening to some of IU's discography. I've been a huge fan of her since I think 2012, but I never really sat down to listen to her album, so I decided to do that finally since I'm trying to listen to a bunch of random albums this year. Out of the albums that I listened to, I liked Palette and Modern Times the most. The production on the Modern Times album was absolutely phenomenal, and besides a few songs with features that kind of clashed with her vocals, almost every song was a gem. So I just finished one of the four graphs that I'm gonna be doing, and it's a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. And if I do all eight squares that I originally planned, this would be a really big bag. Um, but I don't think I mind all that much because if you look at this bag right here, this is a really big bag and I use this all the time when I go shopping and like say if I wanna go out and like hang out in the park or something and I bring some stuff with me, this is the bag that I'll bring. Um, it's really big and it's lined, so it's perfectly fine. And I think I would do the exact same thing with this bag, but if I don't want it to be really big, then I would probably do three more squares, which all have the different graphs on it. So I think for now, I'm just gonna do the three other graphs that I have left and see how big that would be. And if I'm okay with it being bigger, then I'll do like the two granny squares and the two squares that have different stitches and stuff. I probably would have chose a different background color if I would known that it would be this big. If I do all eight squares, then I feel like it'd be fine because it'll go with the other colors that I have planned. But yeah, that's, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish all of the other graphs and see how big it comes out to be. Here is the other graph that I just finished. Um, I attempted to put them together with like this in the front and this in the back, and it just, it didn't look good at all. So I took it apart and now I'm trying to figure out what I should do with these since the bag option isn't working for me anymore. This is what it was looking like but just pretend like these are like connected and it looks cool on here sort of but in person it didn't look good at all so now i'm thinking maybe i should make it a tapestry like removing that and then adding the ruffles on that side but then i have two of them so i'm like should that should they both be tapestries and i just have two separate uh projects that i completed or maybe i should somehow connect them in between and make it one like like a desk mat or something but i don't know so i'm gonna go ahead and try and figure that out and i'll update you as soon as i can for kodama i decided to add a border with this moss looking yarn and so i added one single crochet into each stitch all around i then pinned it to my wall and decided to use it as a jewelry holder since i've been needing one for a while anyways as for Gigi, i was having a little bit of trouble i didn't like it as a desk mat or even a little mat for the top of my bookshelf a coffee table mat wasn't working for me either and i didn't like it on my wall since the background color wasn't really going with my room's aesthetic i tried it in the bathroom and decided on a place but my pins 
bones weren't making a hole in the wall and ended up just messing it up. So I put it on the wall in my room in the end and asked you all on Instagram and the majority of you said to keep it here. So I did. Then the bag turned wall tapestry jewelry holders were complete. The last pieces to show are my Ghibli tapestries. This one I'm using for my necklaces and then this one I'm using for my earrings and a couple of necklaces as well. For this one in particular, I really love the colors that I used. I'm really happy that I used this moss type of yarn to add a little border to it. And I think my earrings make it really pretty. Now this one, I had to fall in love with it. I wasn't liking it at all because this was originally supposed to be for a bag that had multiple colors. And if it wasn't for that, this background would probably be something lighter because this color doesn't really flow with the rest of the room, in my opinion. Maybe you'll like it, maybe you'll agree with me. I feel like it could be better. Um, someone was telling me to move it slightly to right here so that it would look better, and then someone else told me to move it right here. So I'm still gonna try and figure out where exactly I want it to be, and I am going to continue to decorate the walls when I can figure out what I wanna do with it. Um, this one is just in the corner by itself, but I am gonna do some stuff to the wall whenever I can. Um, but overall, they're really cute. I feel like they'd be definitely better as a cute little tote bag like this or something. I think this bag came out really cute and, and it would have been nice to have like a, a Ghibli version. But for what it's worth, I have jewelry holders now and I really like how they came out, especially this one. This one's way better. But I, I also like how I added my choker to the neck of Gigi so it looks like Gigi has like a cat collar and stuff. Thank you so much for watching this challenge. Um, I felt like it was very 50-50. I feel like I could have done better, but the projects just weren't coming out the way that I wanted them to. And I didn't want to spend like a couple more weeks trying to make them work. So yeah, uh, for the most part, uh, the scarf came out great. The tapestries did come out really nice. They just were supposed to be a bag and I was looking forward to the bag, but they're still really nice. Moke came out really cute and the pants did come out really cute and taught me how to begin to learn how to knit pants. So nothing was a fail, you know, even if it doesn't come out the way that you want it to. And you can know like the next time that you try to do something, you'll remember, okay, last time this messed up because I did this. So instead of that, I'll do this. And then you'll succeed in the next time that you do it. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.